I hate on Alibaba a lot. It's full of trading companies, companies that don't really provide a lot of value. They make it for you. They send it back. They add on a huge, ridiculous margin. By the time it gets to you, you're shit out of luck. For the purpose of this video, let's imagine that I don't run a contract manufacturing company in China and I don't have access to all the resources that we have today. I'm starting again fresh, but I keep my knowledge. I know everything I know today that I've developed over eight years of doing this in China. I just don't have access to everything that I do today. What would I do? How would I start? Assuming I'm also not allowed to be in China, you know, right now it's very hard to get a visa. Flights are these crazy prices, you know, 10 times what they normally would have been pre-COVID. So for a lot of people, it's not really reasonable to come here. So let's also assume that I can't come. I hate on Alibaba a lot. And Alibaba in general, I think sucks. I've talked about this a lot, right? It's full of trading companies, companies that don't really provide a lot of value. They take your email, they send it to their, their friend or their cousin or somebody they've done business with. They make it for you. They send it back. They add on a huge, ridiculous margin and send it to you. By the time it gets to you, you're shit out of luck. Even if the product's garbage, it's like who to blame, who's going to take responsibility. There's so many hoops of communication that you have to hop through. The biggest and, and most important piece of advice I can give you is something that I try to live by every day and all that I do, which is start small and scale aggressively. What does that mean? Let's, let's keep it simple today, right? We're not going to be developing an iPhone um, for the sake of this video, just to make things a little easier to communicate. Let's say we're making a hat right? What I would do is I would go on Alibaba and I would find, I would search for hat makers, right? Now, what you're going to see is that a lot of these so-called factories, which I've already told you are mostly trading companies, are going to have thousands and thousands and thousands of pictures. And the truth is, is that they probably haven't made any, maybe some of them, right? They certainly haven't made all of them. So you're going to see these factories that claim to have the capability to make this hat. You're going to reach out. They're going to say, yes, of course we can, you know, and that, and that's just going to be repeated over and over and over. And you can't really know from your standpoint without being able to audit, without being able to go to the factories, you know, without boots in the trenches, as they say, you're not going to be able to find the truth behind a lot of what you're seeing online. So the first thing that I would do is find someone that is agreeable right? Find a sales rep from one of the companies that you talk to that you enjoy communicating with. You're going to spend a lot of time communicating with them. You need to make sure that they're responsive, right? That they respond in a timely manner, that they help you when you have questions and they don't, you know, just shrug you off when they don't know the answer. You know, there's going to be thousands of hat factories or so-called hat factories. Narrow it down to 10 or 20 based on their profile and what you see. Then from the 20, start talking to them. 10 probably won't even reply, right? So then you're down to 10. Start making conversation. Figure out, you know, how can you talk to them? Add them on Skype. If you have WeChat, WeChat's ideal, right? Add them, talk to them, do a video call with them, right? Really get to know this person and tell them, here's my plan, but I'm going to start small and I'm going to scale aggressively. Next, I would say even up to five, obviously there can be capital restraints depending on how much money and what kind of product you're doing. But for a hat, you know, it's not going to be super expensive to get it sampled. Sample with all of them, right? Give all five of those factories your hat design and tell them what's the price, whatever, figure it out and see who does the best job, right? What's the best timeline? Who makes the best quality, right? Is their communication continue to be awesome? post you giving them money, right? Is the quality of the hat good? And then weigh all those things out and pick the one that you think makes the most sense. Now, I understand that I'm obviously oversimplifying this, but I'm trying to give as much juice, as much of the sauce as I can, you know, in a, in a short example. So that'll get you from having your design and your idea to working with a factory that, that makes sense. Don't rush into it. Start slow, right? Don't be afraid of taking your time in the early days. It will cost you way more in both time and money if you don't do that to start things off. 
So that's how I'd vet them. That's how I do the product development. Start slow, get specific, go into the details, get into the nitty gritty, right? Don't be afraid of being annoying because things only going to be more and more annoying, more and more problematic. If you or your, your chosen factory can't deal with those levels of headaches in the early days, how do you think it's going to work when you're doing 10,000 hats? It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. Take your time, pick them out, sift the people out that work the best and uh, the cream will rise to the top. Wish you the best of luck. That's how I would approach manufacturing in China today if I had to start again. If you have any questions, concerns, ideas, drop them in the comments below and we might use it in a future video. Thanks again. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace.